Thank you all, all three of you. I, um, I have a couple of questions. First, Mr. Miller and Mr. Shulman. Um, essentially, um, as my understanding, the IRS headquarters shut down the use of political terms such as Tea Party and other terms we've all learned about in June of 2011. That's when headquarters uh, uh, shut that down. Why weren't people then fired or transferred? Um, more significant action taken than just told, don't do this, given how outrageous this conduct is. Why wasn't more definitive action taken? Um, I am, um, John, sorry. Uh, I don't believe that, uh, that I was aware at the time that that, that had happened. Uh, I, I first became aware of this in May of 2012. Mr. Shulman, you were around during this time. Yeah, in, in uh, June of uh, 2011, um, I don't believe I was aware of this, actually. Uh, well, who was aware? Somebody at headquarters was aware, obviously, but besides Lois Lerner. Well, the report indicates that, that, that uh, exempt organizations knew. Um, uh, there's no indication, I think, from the report, and you'd have to ask the Inspector General that, that uh, others knew at this time. I'm well, sorry. Well, you were, you're acting, you know, head of the IRS. You are worthy the head of the IRS. And show me, well, who did know? I mean, come on. You've read the report. You were acting commissioner. You were commissioner. Come on. If you don't know, it sounds like somebody's not doing his job. So who, why, why wasn't more direct action taken? First, um, you know, when um, these terms were discovered right away, and then the second, had a second chance, IRS had a second chance after the same activity started again in January 2012, incredibly started again. You know, IRS stopped for a while, then went back again, old habits. I can't believe that, frankly. Why wasn't more firm action taken by people, either the, the commissioner himself or by people at the top? It's outrageous. Any <laughs> person can figure out that this is in, uh, unacceptable conduct. Mr. Miller? Um, again, sir, all I can say is we were unaware. I was unaware, I believe, at the time that it had happened. When I found out in May, I took action. But what, what action did you take? So I was uh, briefed on, uh, after, after uh, sending a, a group to take a look at the cases in, in May, uh, they, they reported back to me in May of 2012, um, essentially which mu much of what had uh, transpired uh, and what is shown in the IG report, that the cases were languishing, that a list had been utilized, that letters had gone out that were, uh, that were uh, much more broad than they should be. Uh, at that point, we had already taken care of the letters because those had come up and this is how we knew something was going on and I asked for a review. We then trained our folks. We held workshops to ensure that uh, they were going to do the work well. We took a look at the cases. I asked for the cases to be looked at and grouped in a fashion that those that looked like they were, should be approved were approved. Those that looked like they needed some work got that work, and those that needed further development got that development. Um, so we took action on that. I also, at that time, I, I was aware that TIGDA was working on this, um, but I took some intermediate action pending TIGDA. Um, we transferred uh, and, and reassigned an individual who had been involved in the letters, um, and I asked that the person who I believed at the time was responsible for the listing, that oral counseling occur, at that time, the listing uh, process had... All right, I, I, I appreciate that, and this committee has sent many questions to, um, to you and Mr. Shulman and others to try to get the answer to some of these questions, and we're not going to get the definitive answers at this moment. That's clear. A deeper question to me is, how did this culture... What created this culture of, of, of indifference to the American people and of, of uh, such aggressive behavior, uh, so improperly targeting certain groups? How did that... What, caused that culture to develop? And what did you do about correcting that culture, if, if even we're aware of it? Either one of you, Mr. Miller or Mr. Shulman. I'll start with you, Mr. Shulman. Sure. Um, you know, during my time at the IRS, um, you know, 
I believed and I articulated um, that the IRS needed to be a nonpolitical, nonpartisan We may have articulated agency. that, but how did this happen? Um, I think that there's a set of rules built in uh, to the system. There's laws, there's education of, um, of people that, um, that I think the vast majority of the IRS employees understand that and what abide with that. What happened in Cincinnati? What, how that, what, so, what conditions caused that? Because my time's expiring here. It already has expired, frankly. If you could just very quickly, in a nutshell, bottom line, how did this happen? Mr. Chairman, I, I can't say, um, I can't say that I know that answer. Well, I, you're a I've, I'm six months you out got of. Some, you got some sense of the outfit. You're a commissioner for a good number of years. You got some idea. You thought about this. I'm six months out of out of office. Um, when I left, the IG was looking into this to gather all of the facts. I've now had the benefit of reading the report, um, and that's you know the full accounting of facts that I have at this point. And so I I, I don't think I can answer that question. Well, I'm kind of Mr. disappointed, Chairman. frankly, because you've got you've had time to think about this and. Uh, you certainly have more thoughts than that. Senator Hatch. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> on, two, on two different occasions, my colleagues and I wrote letters to you, Mr. Shulman. In the first letter on March 14, 2012, we asked about selective enforcement by the IRS and requests for donor information. Then we wrote again on June 18, 2012, to request more information about the IRS's practice of requesting confidential donor information. As I wrote in my March 2012 letter, quote, it is critical that the public have confidence that federal tax compliance efforts are pursued in a fair, even-handed, and transparent manner without regard to politics of any kind, unquote. The responses that I received from the IRS were anything but transparent. The IRS responded to these two letters on April 26, 2012 and September, and September 11, 2012, and both of these responses were signed by you, Mr. Miller. These responses did not disclose that the IRS had any reason to believe that it had improperly targeted Tea Party or other, uh, or other uh, conservative organizations or improperly asked for conf confidential donor lists. I ask unanimous consent to put all four letters in the record at this point. The objection. Recently, we have learned that the IRS was, in fact, aware that the IRS had targeted Tea Party and other conservative organizations. We know that by June 2011, at the latest, Lois Lerner, the director of the exempt organizations group in D.C., was aware that IRS examiners had issued a, quote, be on the lookout, unquote, listing regarding Tea Party and other organizations. We also know that on May 30th, 2012, TIGTA briefed you, Mr. Shulman, about its ongoing audit of these practices. Yet when you testified before Congress on March 22nd, 2012, uh, you said, quote, there is absolutely no targeting, unquote. To this day, you have not con corrected your testimony, even though you know that the IRS was inappropriately screening Tea Party organizations. Now, Mr. Shulman, why have you not come forward before today to correct the record and the knowledge that there was, in fact, inappropriate screening occurring in the IRS, the organization that you had headed? Um, let, me, let me answer a few things. One is um, the full set of facts around these circumstances came out last week in the TIGDA report, which I've read. Until that point, I did not have a full set of facts uh, about Yeah, but you knew this was going on. Why didn't you uh, let us know when we, that's what we were inquiring about when we sent these letters to you? Um, what I knew was not the full set of facts in this report. Um, what I knew, um, sometime in the spring of 2012 was um, that there was a list that was being used. Knew that uh, the word Tea Party was on the list. Didn't know what other words were on the list. Didn't know the scope and severity of this. Didn't know if groups that were pulled in were groups that would have been pulled in anyway. But you knew and I took the, what I thought at the time, and I think now, was the proper step when a concern's brought to the Commissioner of Internal Revenue Service, which is to make sure that the matter is being looked at by the Inspector General. But we sent you letters inquiring about this with a number of senators on those letters. And you should have corrected the record. And you should have done it long before today. And that's the point I'm making. Mr. Miller, 
your signatures on both of the responses that I received from the IRS. Nowhere in your responses did you indicate that you knew the IRS was improperly selecting Tea Party organizations for extra scrutiny. Nowhere in your responses did you indicate that you knew the IRS was asking improper questions about donor contributions. You just sat on that guilty knowledge. Mr. George stated that he briefed you on May 3, 2012 about TIGTA's audit, so we know you were aware of it at the time that you responded to my second letter, if not both letters. But you didn't mention any of this in your responses to me, to the Senate, or to any other congressional body. Now, Mr. Miller, that's a lie by omission. There's no question about that in my mind. It's a lie by omission. And you kept it from people who have the obligation to oversee this matter. On Friday, you swore under oath that you had told the truth in your prior responses. You said that the IRS had been guilty of, quote, horrible customer service, unquote. Mr. Miller, what we have learned about the IRS in recent days goes far beyond horrible customer service. Why did you mislead me and my colleagues, my fellow senators, and most importantly, the American people, by failing to tell us what you knew about the exact subject we were asking about? Why didn't you tell us? Uh, Mr. Hatch, I did not lie. You what? I did not lie, sir. Um, you lied by omission. You, you knew what was going on. You didn't, and you knew that we had asked. You should have told us. I answered the, 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 the questions. I answered them truthfully. Did I know about the list? Yes. Not on the first letter, by the way, because the timing, uh, I wouldn't have known for that. On the second letter, we answered those questions, sir. Frankly, the, the concept of political motivation here, I did not agree with that in May. I do not agree with that now. We were not politically motivated in targeting uh, conservative groups. Huh. That's borne out by Mr. George's report. What else can you call it? He just said he hadn't found that up till now. He, and then today's uh, statement was a little more definitive than the one he gave to the House. Now, let me just say this. You knew this was going on. You knew we were concerned. You knew we'd written to you. You had our letters. Why didn't you correct the record? Why didn't you let us know? We would have solved this problem a long time ago. Tigda was looking at the cases, sir. And oh, so Tigda Tigda, was it was Tigda's it. responsibility or was it yours? I'm sorry? The commissioner relied on you to answer our letters. Why didn't you answer them? And why didn't you tell us this information that you knew, I at least on the second? I believe I did answer them and I did answer them truthfully, sir. Uh, my time thank, thank you, sir. Hash. Uh, next is, uh, we're going down the list.